Hello everybody. Well, good morning because you're watching this in the morning, but I'm, I think this is just now afternoon. I've already had my late breakfast, so I'm not going to eat yet, but after I do this video, I think I'll go eat. So we're going to talk about what's going on around us right now. There's some big things happening, really big things, and we're we need to keep an eye on them. I don't know what's going to trigger the next event, but things that could easily do that are lining up. The basic message here is that we've got a ship without a rudder. Now, most ships, big or small, have some way to propel them, whether it's sails and wind or whether it's motors turning a propeller. But even those have a rudder, because then you can redirect the thrust coming from the propeller, or if you got a jet ski boat, you can have water pressure going out the back. But they all have a rudder. This park is very, very busy today. I think school's out. There's just way too many kids. I don't have a problem with that, but it's not normal for us to have this many kids in the park unless school's out. So I might have to shut down time to time as they get close. They're all running around. Some are getting ready to run down the ramp down to the water, and it's covered in mud, so I hope they don't do too much of that. Anyhow, so our ship is not doing well. So let's take a quick verse in here, Proverbs 29.2. When the righteous are in authority, in authority, the people rejoice. And we have. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. So we've had a lot of groaning lately, and I got somebody walking right over here, and I think he's going to he's going to end up in camera. So I'm going to have to stop this. Okay, I'm back. I guess I have that invitational look that people come over and want to talk to me, which is fine. We get a chance to talk, to talk a little bit. Everybody says they're going to check out my channel, but most of them never do. It's all talk. Occasionally I'll get someone over. And I got a good story at the end that I'm going to tell, so hang in for that. Okay, so the sound you've been hearing lately uh, but when a wicked man rules, the people groan. You've been hearing a lot of groaning going on. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. Continue doing the right things, you know. Don't do things the government tells you to do unless, you know, if it goes against the Bible. But if otherwise, do what you're supposed to do. you got to follow the rules. And 29.12 of Proverbs. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all of his servants become wicked. So there's a lot of wicked servants out there in this country. There's a lot of groaning going on. We've got millions of illegal people in this country. Some coming here to try to find a better life. But I would say probably the vast majority are here to try to do damage to this country. Every country in the world that's been against God has been taught from childhood up. We're seeing that these Hamas children are being taught in school to hate Israel or America because we stand up for Israel a lot. So a lot of these people are here now. And guess what they're going to try to do? I expect another, not skyscrapers, but another 9-11 event where they're going to do something. Look at the poll numbers that we've had. Trump is winning in the primaries. He even won Nikki Haley's home state of North Carolina. There's no one can stand up against him. I've even seen talk where he could even help turn New York to a red state. That would be pretty big. 
I don't know that we can topple California because they've had control of the elections for a long time. So I don't think we could get them out of office short of violence because they own everything out there, including the polls. But everybody else, I think we could probably change. We'd certainly have enough of a majority to completely stop the regime that's been in office and replace it with better government, I hope. Whether you like the big T or not, he stands against what's been going on in this country, firmly against it. And he would reverse it all if given the chance. And that's the key. Will he be given the chance? I don't think so. I think that something's going to happen significantly, significantly bad to prevent him from getting into office. And as I said, we've got to do what the government says. Romans 13, 11, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. As I've said before, Jesus didn't pick a perfect time to come to the planet. He came during Roman occupation. He didn't stop it. He let him know what he thought about it. But he was more concerned about the church, the Jewish church at the time, than he was about the Roman authorities. And he talked calmly to the Roman authorities when he was brought before him, if he talked at all, but he didn't, he didn't tell them, you've got to let Israel go. So we still have to do what the government says. And in time, we will replace the government under normal conditions. But we're in the end times. And Satan's going to get his 15 minutes of fame. I'm going to be using that phrase a lot. And we know what a 15 minutes of fame means for, you know, people getting the limelight, the cameras on them, everybody knows what's going on. And then 20 minutes later, nobody knows who they are. But they got their 15 minutes of fame. Now, what do you do with that? Well, he's going to try to beat God once again. And again, I, I smile because whenever I say Satan's trying to beat God, I get that Linus cartoon of Lucy holding the football and Peanuts coming up to kick it. Only it's God is holding the football and Satan's going to come up and kick it. And God's going to pull the football away and Satan's going to fall on his back again. And we're all going to laugh. Afterwards, we may get a laugh out of this, but it's, it's going to be painful for people. Because unfortunately, people are the football. So... Be prepared. Have everything you need ready to write out whatever comes. We don't know what's coming our way. We're told about certain things, but most of the big stuff are after we're gone. So we don't have to really worry about it. But we do have to worry about the stuff coming up to it. We're being snatched away for a reason. So it might get bad. Certainly in the world, there are parts of it that are. Certainly we've seen atrocities. October 7th would be a good example. So there are pockets of really bad stuff. And just pray that you're not anywhere near any of these pockets. But soon it's going to overwhelm us. But that's probably our exit. Okay, so let's see. So we had the United States go in the wrong direction under this so-called leadership. We've seen directly what they can do. The price of everything is going up. If you just had the ability, and that's tough for a lot of people, to stock up, of course the rich have. Stock up two or three years ago, even pre-COVID, if you, if you had a supply of food to, to sustain you through bad times. Back when I was working, I did buy some of those containers. And the food's not that good. But if you're hungry, you eat it. But it's not gonna it's not gonna last forever. You don't need to have it last forever. It just has to last from the time it gets so bad that you need it 
until we are pulled out of here. How long that is, we don't know. As I've talked about it, the rapture predictors are out there all over the place again. April seems, March and April seem to be a high watch period. Can I say for sure? Nope. I think that this year is a good possibility. Whether it's a spring exit or a fall exit. If I was betting, I would bet on one or the other or both. So when things change, be ready to change with it. And since we don't have any leadership, we're meandering. What's going to happen if we meander into a war zone? Or what's going to happen if we meander into a minefield? So we've been pretty lucky so far. I say lucky. It's a combination of God protecting us and us being far enough away from Israel to only be a secondary bad guy to the people that are trying to change things. Okay, uh, let's see. The beast, the harlot, has been successful so far. And we're told that the Antichrist is riding on the back of the beast. He's kind of helping the beast along. He's one of the seven kings helping to make all this one world order to happen. At some point in time, when it's far enough along for him, he's going to hop down off the beast and say, thank you. I don't want you around anymore. There's only room for one of us. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. And he will eventually kill the harlot. But in the meantime, they're all kind of working together. Again, I don't think we're going to be around for a lot of this. We're seeing it all. We're seeing it form. But we won't be here for all of it. I pray. Because <laughs> we could possibly be wrong. Now, on a scale of 1 to 100, I'd say that we're 99% sure. But there's always 1%. We don't know the mind of God all the way on all this detail. Because he doesn't tell us. We can only go by the other scriptures that help support this. We're not subject to wrath. Okay, so we can't be here for the second half of the tribulation or the second half of the 70th week. I don't like calling it all tribulation. Only the second half is called the Great Tribulation, by the way. The first half doesn't really have a, a name associated with it. In this life, you will have tribulation, so we know that at any time you can call anything tribulation. But it's not a designated biblical term for the 70th week. Only the second half. All right. So when he hops down, hopefully we won't be here. Okay, so I want to tell you what I did yesterday. My son calls me up, or not, or texts me. Nobody uses phones anymore. And said, can you drive me to a funeral? This was day before yesterday, for yesterday. And I said, sure, I'll come get you. And I put a suit on because I need to... You know, if you're invited to an event, you've got to dress appropriately. And I have my suit that I sometimes would work with. So I go, and he's in his teenager clothes, if you will. Dark, but still. I don't think, I don't know if he owns a suit. I've never seen him in one. I mean, since he was young, we dress the kids up in suits to take their pictures. but And those get given away when they outgrow them in six weeks. But anyhow, we went to this funeral. Normally, funerals, and I've been to a number of them, um, can be unpleasant, totally unpleasant. You just go there and you just, as best as possible, if you're not directly related to the people or if you're just a guest, you just kind of keep your mouth shut, put a somber face on and just bear with it. But this was a Christian family who lost their mother at age 65 to cancer. So there's some reason to be somber. But they didn't treat it completely that way. They treated it as a celebration of life and had a praise service at the church. 
Now, the church is my old home church that I'm still a member of, but it's so far away, I have to, I had to drive, you know, two and a half hours with my son to go to that church. He doesn't go there anymore either. He goes to a different church that one of the daughters goes to, and that's how he found out about it. And one of the sons is on the staff at a church in the next state over. So a third church was represented. So we had three churches represented there. Lots of praise and worship going on, a lot of singing, a lot of greeting, a lot of smiles looking back at this wonderful lady's life. That's the way it should be. And of course, as a Christian, we know where she is. You don't have to worry about her anymore. She's with Jesus. Now the rest of us have to slug through it down here until we get there. Now, the bottom line of all this, life is not guaranteed to be a rose garden all the way through until the end. People are going to be dying all the way up until the rapture around the world. People die. I don't know how many. I've, I've looked it up before, but I don't remember how many per day, how many per minute. But it's, it's a staggering number around the world when you've got 8 billion people. Most of them are not Christians. There are plenty that are. So if you don't make it all the way to the rapture, don't worry. You get to get there quicker than the rest of us. But we're all going to end up in the same place. We're all going to be able to have our new bodies. And we're all going to be able to hug each other when we get there. So it's not a sad occasion for Christians. Which if you're not a Christian, you need to be one. Find another Christian that can talk to you about this. I've done invitations, and I, I, I don't do them every video, because I think the majority of the people that watch this channel are already Christians, just I can tell by the comments. But we do have to occasionally put invitations out, and I do that. If you don't know Jesus personally, you need to invite him into your life, repent, which means I agree that I'm a sinner and I'm going to turn from those ways with your help and I accept your sacrifice, your free sacrifice. That's the way it works, guys. It's real simple. And then our life can be pleasant here and happy and joyous. And if we don't get all the way to the rapture and we die, it's still going to be joyous for everybody. Till we meet in the clouds. God. Well, I'm walking over to my swing over there so I can sit and do a riverside chat. The river's up a little bit, but not a lot. It's still going to take another day for the rain that just happened to come through, but it's not that much. You can see here where the mud is coming up the bank of the uh, boat ramp. That's how high the river has been recently. Because a week or two ago, he scraped the mud off. I saw him do it. So that's a recent flooding. It can come up quite a bit. And there's camping to my left. It's called platform camping. They built them up on wooden platforms, and that's where you put your tent. No electricity, no water. Primitive camping. But they're on the platforms in case it floods. So the part that I'm standing on now can be underwater. Uh, oh, so. I'm in the swing. Let me flip this round and let's talk.